so just a brief introduction of myself. So I'm Ryan Cavanizas. Uh, just real quick, uh, I'm a United States Air Force officer, and you know, since the beginning of COVID up until uh, currently, um, some of the uh, things I've been doing were in data analytics, uh, finance, and accounting. Um, I also practice as a registered nurse on the weekends. I also fly um, as a licensed pilot once uh, once a month, and I also have learned um, a little bit of robotic processing automation. Um, I'm an alumni of the University of Hawaii, and I'm also a graduate of uh, Globus University in Tokyo. Uh, for military service, so I have 19 years of service, um, eight of them being enlisted. Um, I was an NCO, and I also uh, commissioned, I, I've also been commissioned for the past 11 years, and I'll make uh, 20 years actually um, in a few months. I've ex I have experience in the tactical, operational, and joint um, strategic levels. And I have experience in working with uh, civilians as a direct representative of the military. Um, in the civilian side, I've had experience at the operational, tactical, and strategic levels in healthcare. Um, and I've also had experience in nonprofit, small business, private business, and as a service member supporting local government. Um, I'm also a member and active volunteer of SEND, which is a network of uh, accomplished professionals and executives from uh, Fortune 500 companies here in the um, DC area. And, you know, being a reservist and now full-time, you know, I've had experience in, um, in the civilian side while in reserve status. Um, I've been activated while having a civilian career. And so I have, uh, you know, um, experience in both the civilian and military worlds and how they translate and don't translate. And one of the things that I wanted to say that, you know, you can't, one thing that means a lot to me is uh, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. Um, so you have to trust uh, that the dots will somehow connect in your future. And I'll be followed by my uh, friend and former colleague, uh, Laura Ray. Thank you so much, Ryan. I greatly appreciate that. As you stated, I am Laura Ray and I'm I'm going to just go ahead and give you a quick introduction of myself, just some personal information about myself. I am an HR consultant, so I do HR consulting more or less right now. A lot of times it's for free, so it's not a conflict with what I do on my civilian side. I actually do belly dancing, have been doing that, was doing it pre-pandemic, performing on stage, and then pandemic hit. So now I just do it through virtual courses and also just some in-person training. And I'm back into martial arts. I started doing Kung Fu, stopped it. Now I'm getting back into Kempo Kung Fu. So that is a little passion that I have right now. And just some of the things I've done as far as education wise, I've got my bachelor's in psychology. I also received my uh, one master's in counseling which was an emphasis in personnel relations. And I received my MBA and I got that from, it's a domestic MBA, so I did not get it through Globus but I had a domestic MBA and I got it through Troy University. And just now to go about some information about me on the civilian side. The civilian side, I am a federal employee. I do work for the Department of Defense, which is also the Department of the Air Force. So I do work at the strategic level within the Air Force. And I do human resources, which means big fancy thing is that I just go through the policies, look at policies and make sure that the all the other we call them match comms. So all those individuals and all those other bases and installations are performing the right processes for their civilian employees in the GS system. And I also am a member of our North Northern Virginia SHRM, which is our HR program. So I'm actually that. And also on the side, as far as I do civilian, I do help other businesses with some of their HR consulting as I was working towards my doctorate. And I had to put that on pause, but I was working towards my doctor. So I do do some of that HR consulting on my civilian side. And now just to go into me about my military experience, I am a guardsman. So I have been, and I have been activated, but like Ryan says, I've been in 20 years coming up on 21. And I also started out as a non-commissioned officer. And I initially started out in IT. So I was a network administrator. Then I moved into information management. And then the light called me or I got told that I was gonna become an officer. So I then became an officer and I've been an officer now for 10 years and I've been in officer in personnel. So I've been doing personnel for, for the last 10 years. And what I've done is I've worked at what we call our unit level. I've also worked at an operational level and now also strategic level, which is working at our headquarters, handling personnel information relationships, which means we get you in and we also get you out. 
So that was what I've done my military side. And just going in and looking at things for the future, I always go in and say, if you don't have a vision, find someone who has a vision and use that as your motivation to go move forward. And pre always create your path that you want to follow. Don't always follow in someone else's path because sometimes they are not, their path is not the way for you to get to where you're trying to go. And just gain your inspiration from others. And as you do that, you will end up inspiring people that are looking up to you to move forward. And that is all I have right now. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be here and welcoming us into your space. With that, we can go ahead and go into our panel discussion. Let me just bring up that slide. So Nakamura-san, would you like to start us off? Thank you for your introduction, Ryan and Lana. Uh, we will start maybe 20 to 25 minutes panel discussion from here. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to ask Ryan, why, why did you choose to work at the military? Uh, so actually, I joined the military when I was 17 years old. Um, you know, at that time, I was looking for, you know, what I would want to do after high school. Obviously, I, I wasn't an athlete. Um, there were some other things, but one of the things that resonated back then, you know, as I uh, got near to graduation was um, I wanted to be a part of the Air Force. And that was sometime, you know, uh, maybe when I was six or seven years old, um, I remember my dad and my mom, we were at the PX on Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii. And um, at that time they were flying F-15s and um, the F-15s were in a formation getting ready to land. And I thought, oh, that was cool. Maybe I'll do that someday. And so um, at that time I was nearing uh, graduation, uh, high school graduation. Um, you know, I was looking what I, need, what I should do after high school. So um, I decided to enlist um, in the Air National Guard. Thank you. And uh, Lana, what, what about for you? Well, for me, I initially wanted to join the military as soon as I got out of high school, but uh, my parents would not allow me. So I found out I had only applied for one school and that was a New Mexico military institute. And they found that out and they said, absolutely not. So I wound up not entering military at the time that I finished high school, got into college, did ROTC, Army ROTC, Things did not work out as planned because of my parents said, I'm only paying for school, so you're going to have to either do that. So I went and finished school. Then I got out, started working, worked as a teacher, worked as a counselor, and just doing living life. And then September the 11th happened. And that was another call on my life that I went. And I realized that that was where my heart was, is to serve my country. And I joined the military the following year. <laughs> And, and and your parents were en encouraging your decision at that time? Absolutely not. Oh, <laughs> but I was really? an adult at the time. So, uh -huh. and I was not 17. I was, I actually entered much later and I entered the National Air National Guard, but uh, I kind of just did it on my own without anyone really knowing that I had done it. So, yes. Wow. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Um, second question. Uh, what were or what are the challenges working in the military? Uh, can I start from Larasan? Yes, some of the challenges in working in the military, especially being a, a, a guardsman for me, is having that balance. So like I do work Monday through Friday with the Department of the Air Force full time and then having to transition like on weekends. So like next weekend, I'll have to go and do my military duty and transitioning that type of and work and also fitting that into my schedule because I don't always have to get a weekend life and then also do a military duty. Those are the biggest challenges is trying to make sure we balance that out and also still maintaining my skill level and my knowledge for my military work and also trend, flipping back in and out that switch for military and civilian. Thank you. Uh, Ryan San, in, in your case, what do you- It's also the same thing, um, mm -hmm. but however, I do want to add that um, I'm part of a disaster response medical unit. Mm -hmm. um, and probably the most difficult part is that, you know, other than that, outside of the uh, um, drill weekends, one weekend a month, um, there's numerous times where I have to be on training Monday through Friday where I had held a regular job. Um, the other hard part was, you know, maybe last minute, we need you to show up. Uh, can you come to the unit? Um, you know, it could be like a, a you know, a storm um, warning. Um, those are really difficult because at that, during those times, uh, especially before my current job, um, 
you know, a lot of my employers would question me, why do I need to go to attend uh, military training, military training so often mm -hmm. um, throughout the week uh, and not outside of the uh, workplace time? Thank you. Um, you. You have built up your career in the military and both of you have seeked uh, a master's degree. Um, wh why did you seek a master's degree, Ryan? Uh, so for uh, so as you, as I introduced myself earlier, um, I'm actually a registered nurse. Uh, I haven't practiced uh, regularly uh, for quite some time, um, and so at maybe about uh, eight years ago, I've been meaning to uh, change uh, the industry that I wanted to go to, and so I had looked up other um, uh, maybe possibly other bachelor degree programs or master's degree programs. Um, but I actually found Globus uh, during that time, and um, it it stayed in the back of my mind. I didn't feel like maybe I was qualified uh, to attend uh, business school because I did not have a business background. Um, but after I visited the school um, in 2015 of fall, actually uh, exactly around this time of the year, um, I visited the campus. Um, that was when I decided that you know this is this is where I need to. This is the direction that I need to take. Thank you. And Rara san, uh, why, you know, why two masters for, for, for yourself? Well, initially I got my first master's and I was like, okay, I was good. I was done. And, but education has always been a part of my life and was far as growing up. And I was actually still enlisted when I received my MBA. So I was still, I think I was probably an E5 at the time that I had done that when I got my MBA. And I, I was sitting there going, what else can I do? I want to build myself. I want to do business. I want to translate this information that I have and move into a different area and aspect of my career. And I did that with my MBA and I, with an emphasis in HR. And within a year after getting my MBA, I started working doing civilian HR work. So it actually led me in a path that I did not realize it was going to lead to so quickly, but I did that to further my knowledge and get a better understanding and foundation to move into a career that I really wanted to move into. So uh, j just after one year, you, you were kind of in your dream job. It wasn't quite my dream job, but it got me on my dream path. <laughs> I see. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, Ryan, in, in your case, you, you chose an international MBA. You chose Globus. Can you speak a little bit about, you know, pursuing an international MBA? Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll explain. Uh, the reason yeah. why was one uh, in particular um, at that time in my life. Uh, again, you know, I was not really happy being in healthcare at that time. I was also working at um, kind of like a mid-level uh, administrator in the healthcare industry, and um, the concept of uh, kokorazashi uh, stuck with me. Um, you know, obviously, I had visited Japan multiple times prior to going to the school, but. Um, that one concept uh, after visiting the campus is what made me uh, decide to go to Globus. Also, I think, um, you know, especially with today's current age, uh, I, I didn't think at the time what American universities uh, were, where the tuition costs was not, um, I don't think, I, I don't, I don't think it was a, a good a return on investment. Um, I felt like uh, the Japanese school or Globus in particular was a lot more affordable at that time. Ryan, because you touched on kokorozashi, um, maybe it could be a, a first time word for the many attendees. Can you explain a little bit what kokorozashi is? Uh, so it's a it's a Japanese word that means um like your personal mission. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's taught throughout the um curriculum, or you know, it's brought up uh, multiple times, but. Basically, in you know maybe in American English, um, it could be understood as you know maybe what you know your aspirations. It could be you know career related. It could be your personal goals uh, that you want to attain. But it's usually just one sentence of what exactly do you want to do um, with in your case your life. Thank you. Um, I I think I was the dean when I welcomed you. And all uh, MBA students would present his or her kokorozashi in front of the lecturers as well as the classmates. So 
Uh, Ryan, what did you present when when you were uh, at school? Uh, I would say at the end, at the graduation, um, I wanted to create uh, products that people would be using um, around the world. Thank you. Oh, uh, I'll ask you know how how your kokorozashi evolved later, but um, let, let's go to the next question. <clears throat> um, Rara san, have you used the GI Bill for your education? Yes, I did. Um, as I when I entered the military, I'd already <laughs> had my bachelor's and my master's degree, my first master's, and I did use the post 9-11 GI Bill when I received my MBA. And I did also go back and start working on my doctorate in business administration with emphasis in HR, and I was using it for that as well. So yes, I have used it. And using the GI Bill is not, not a complicated process. Absolutely not. I applied for my, you know, did the FAFSA and then also worked it out and worked it through the process. The VA sent me paperwork letting me know how much money I did and still didn't have and how many months I had left on it. So it was really an easy process. The VA tries to make sure that they let you know how much money you are and aren't getting and they do that and work through the school as well with that. Thank you. Um, Ryan son, in, in your case, have you used the GI Bill in your education? I have used the GI Bill um, and for my uh, Bachelor of Science in Nursing at the University of Hawaii. Um, it's the same thing as Laura said, someone takes care of, uh, you know, someone walks you through the process. Um, but the last time that I've used the GI Bill was uh, back in, from 2005 to uh, 2010. Oh, so quite quite long long time ago. Yeah, quite a long time. So I'm I'm not sure what the process is now, but I'm pretty sure it's it's still pretty much the same. Um, someone's still assisting you throughout the um process to make sure that you get your benefits. At at Globus, we have uh, one staff dedicated to supporting veterans. So uh, he's a Irish person, and he would you know work with VA uh, for accepting the GI Bill. Um, what what is the biggest difference uh, th that you have experienced when, when you moved from military to a civilian job? Uh, let me ask uh, Lara-san. Well, for me, uh, initially when I started, I, I was already civilian and then I transitioned to military. And mm -hmm. I actually was one of those individuals within the National Guard. They became a National Guard technician, which meant I worked full time as a federal employee wearing the uniform every day and I still had to do my military duty. And it was just recently in 2019 that I transitioned out of doing that on a day-to-day -day basis and working at the strategic level doing my civilian job, which meant I still worked at the same place that I was still used to wear the uniform. And the hardest part was having people no longer call me by my rank, but to actually refer to me and call me by my name and also understand that the role I was in had transitioned but that was the hardest part. And also me not answering the phone and saying, you know, so it's a, look, Captain Ray and just doing stuff like that. So I had to figure out how to not do that piece. But for me, it was really an, an easy transition because I'd already had that structured and foundation. So it was really easy to transition and move. Also, since I know HR and I knew how to translate the language of what we do militarily into the civilian aspect of the world, it was easier for me, but I noticed with some of my counterparts, it was a little bit more difficult. So that's why I use my skill is to help them mm -hmm. figure out how to translate some of the maybe more technical work that they've done into civilian lifestyle. So. Thank you. Um, Ryan, -san, in, in, in your case, um, what would you say is the biggest difficulty moving from military to the civilian jobs? I would say maybe the difficult part is um, it could be the culture from, you know, a military culture where, you know, it's a yes, sir, yes, ma'am culture, um, you know, so it's a disciplined culture, a work culture um, in the private sector, depending on the organization that you're working at, not every place is going to be a yes, sir, or yes, ma'am type of place. Um, you know, obviously you have other competing um, uh, in, in an organization, maybe, you know, some may not may not agree with some of the things that you, some of the initiatives that you want to take. And um, in the military, you know, usually with your subordinates, you know, it's like, yes, sir, uh, and follow through. In the, in the private sector, it's not like that. Um, and that's probably one of the, I think one of the things that stand out to me uh, that 
makes it difficult, maybe it could be difficult uh, transitioning from a military work culture to the private sector. Now, uh, I'd like to flip the question a little bit, but um, how how is the military people seen um, from the civilian uh, world? Like, um, I, I understand that maybe in the military world or Department of Defense, you know, um, a lot of people are military people. So, um, I mean, they, they understand you, but if you go to like uh, completely maybe healthcare or in Rasan's case, maybe, you know, in counseling, helping people in the community, how are you seen because of your maybe high rank or uh, long, long time experience? Um, can, can I go from Rasan? Yes. And I do work for the Department of Defense and or Department of Air Force. And you would think that people would understand the military because we do have a lot of civilians who've never served. They don't understand the military. So sometimes they just make an assumption and I sometimes just nod and let it go. And, and just got, but we we are more structured in a lot of the ways that we think we are also bigger risk takers. And sometimes they're a little bit more risk averse. So we do do some things that are, um, you know, we, we try moving the moving the needle forward a bit but also using a process but a lot of times i won't oftentimes tell individuals that i am in the military because it depends on where i am some people are pro-military and some people aren't so i kind of watch my engagement with those individuals before i will release that information so it's just i have to look and engage but some are very appreciative and most think i just fly an airplane so that's really where I am with it. And I have to try to break down what I really am doing for them. But most people just think I fly an airplane because I'm in the Air Force. So that's the biggest thing. Thank you. ryan son, in your case? Uh, my experiences have been, I would say, generally good. Um, I think maybe the impressions that people get of me, um, you know, when they find out I'm a U.S. Air Force officer uh, is that, you know, maybe I have, I come with this, um, discipline. Um, I have everything. I got my eyes dot, my eyes dotted and my T's crossed, um, that I am high speed and high strung. Um, I, I would say generally that's the, the, the understanding. And then we're pretty straight. I would say that our way of communication is actually a lot more direct, uh, which may also be difficult, um, uh, for some people. And that requires also, um, self-reflection of not everyone is direct uh, compared to the military work, work culture. Thank you. Um, maybe, maybe because, you know, our, our relationship was uh, faculty and student, you were very, you know, you were very kind to many of us. That, that's my impression, you know, welcoming you as an MBA student. <laughs> now, um, what, what, what is your kokorozashi, future aspiration? Um, Ryan, you said that when you were studying MBA, you wanted your product to be used, you know. Uh, I, I just wanted to create something that would be used by people worldwide. Um, I would say only recently I'm starting to live that dream, and I would say I would say that that personal um, mission statement is still the same, no, no change um, since I'm living it now. But but you you feel that what you what you said maybe six, seven years ago, is actually, you know, coming true. Yes. Can, can, can you help, help us? Can you introduce a little bit of what kind of product you made? Uh, so basically, uh, for the Na um, National Guard, I, I've developed and launched an app. Um, initially, the app was on the chopping block. But when I came on board, I took this job, uh, came on full-time military duty, duty status to take this job. Um, because it would kind of lead me on that pathway of um, living that dream of, you know, creating something and launching it and then people are using it. Uh, but basically, it's an application that can um, help identify risk behaviors amongst uh, National Guard members uh, across the nation. And, you know, in the National Guard, it's about 450,000 people. Um, and so with that application um, at the strategic, strategic level, um, you know, they're able to identify what, what are some um, behaviors uh, that are at risk amongst the service members. It could be geo, uh, could be um, the location, could be uh, maybe prevalence of crime in, in some area and so forth. Thank you. So it's having an impact to 450,000 
um, people. Yes. Wow. Now you, you are living your kokorozashi. <laughs> Lara san, what, what is your kokorozashi future aspiration? Well, I, as like Ryan said, I'm living it right now. And you didn't think that I would ever get there. Essentially starting out as a GS6 uh, federal employee and now wind up being a GS14 is really just a, it's a great feeling to have. And knowing the work that I do is creating policy and a creative policy for our so federal employees that were within the National Guard, over 40,000 people to help them with the process of hiring and retaining. It was just a great idea to see it come into fruition and seeing policies getting published that you had a hand in knowing that years down the road that these will be things that will affect and also maintain and retain individuals working for the National Guard and the military within the 50 states, the three territories and the one district. It is just amazing to see that happen. That was mine is just making sure that I provided a product and a process for people to be the best selves and to continue to help other people and military people further their education and their career. You, you said that um, contrary to maybe the perception uh, in the military, you, you are willing to take some risk. Can, can you elaborate a little bit of, you know, what kind of risk do you take or well, what's different from maybe civilian jobs? Well, sometimes the risk that I take is just going in and I always go in and say, mine is I ask for forgiveness. Um, sometimes I don't always go in and ask for something to do, but I go ahead and take that initiative and go ahead and get it done, especially if I know that it is going to lead to a good process. So right now, just even militarily, I've actually volunteered by this, my state for a process with, had, did not tell my two-star general, I'm a one-star general, but I volunteered us for a process and a project that will actually help with our retention and recruitment process. Because right now we are at 87%, which is not good, but we're trying to get to 95% by the end of the year. So I worked it out so we can become a part of one of the projects that Ryan said they were working on and, and it's with resiliency and retention. So I volunteered my state to do that. And then I told my, uh, my generals about it after I had done it. And then they said, kudos to you for doing that. So that way we could be on the front end to uh, benefit from that project. Thank you. Um, we have military people today. We have uh, so maybe uh, non-military people. Um, what, what would be your advice to, to the people uh, joining us tonight? Um, ryan -san? I would say that if you're thinking about um, maybe pursuing, for furthering your education, I would recommend it. Again, as, you know, as my last quote said, you know, at some point, um, the dot, your, you know, the dots will connect at some point. And for me, it did take some time. Um, but when I look at it now, um, you know, everything uh, makes sense. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your experience and, and knowledge tonight. Uh, Lana san, what, what would, would be your piece of advice? I would go and say, even if you're afraid or concerned about doing it, do it anyway, do it scared. Uh, you may not see what how it will benefit you, but you'll find out once you go through this process how that education will align with all of the things that you've learned and that the military has instilled in you. Because a lot of our processes are just out coming out of the business world because what we do in the military, the military is a business and you can apply that process to military and also the civilian world and it will just get you that much faster and quicker to your end goal. Thank you very much for sharing your experience and your precious advice.